morning, Cambridge Springs Elementary. This is Mrs. Walsh bringing you today's virtual art instruction. Good morning. Today's virtual art lesson is going to be showing you how to fold, design, and cut out a traditional six-sided snowflake. I have for my materials a regular piece of copying paper, a pencil to draw with, a good pair of sharp scissors. Now, if you do not have a good pair of sharp scissors, all you have is something that's smaller and much more plasticky, you can still complete this lesson. I'm just gonna show you kind of a shortcut to make it easier. If you have smaller scissors, you can't cut through as many layers of paper as you can with the, with the sharper, larger scissors. So I will talk about that when we get to the point where we are cutting. You also have an optional, if you have a hole punch, it can be really fun to use hole punches when you are doing a traditional snowflake. So to begin, I'm gonna set these materials aside so I just have the paper in front of you. And we start by folding the paper in half, top to bottom one time. We call this the hamburger fold when you're starting with a rectangle. And you wanna carefully get that paper right in half, top to bottom. Sharp creases always make a difference, whether you are doing snowflakes or origami. It's important that your creases be nice and sharp. A test is if you let go of the crease and the paper starts to flop back up at you, you probably didn't crease it hard enough. Now I understand, I have pretty flimsy fingernails as well as you know a lot of people. So if you have something that can help you, like the side of a marker, you can always use something to help you push down on that crease if you have really flimsy fingernails and it hurts to do that. Then, be really careful because I am not going to tell you to fold this paper in half again. It looks like that's what I'm gonna do, but it's not. So before you follow along right here, make sure you watch me. I am gonna bring the side of the paper across to the other side, and I am going to match up those edges. But all I'm gonna crease is about an inch at the bottom. I am not pushing that whole crease down, because creasing this whole section might confuse you when you go to do the fold of thirds. So now all I've done is when I open that back up, you can see this marks the halfway point across the bottom. The bottom is the edge that is creased. Now I'm carefully gonna plant my thumbnail right on that middle crease I just did. I'm gonna pull up the bottom right hand corner and I want it to point towards, and point I mean by right here, the edge of the paper is gonna point up to about one inch in from the edge. And I'm gonna crease that down, holding it like that. Now, you might have to refine this a couple times before you get it just right, because what you want is for this edge to match up when you pull this side, the bottom left corner, over top at an angle. So you want this to not be close, you want it to be right lined up edge to edge before you now crease this down. And then a good test to see if you got this right is open back up and see if this edge is now in that crease. If it's not, and mine is not perfectly there, you can play around with moving this crease a tiny bit moving this crease a tiny bit until you have pretty good nice overlap where this fits right into that crease pocket and this edge matches right along this side. And I say that it looks kind of like a little fox's face with the ear sticking up when you get this right. Now at this point we need to fold it in half so bring one of the fox's ears across and plant it on top of the other. Try to get this edge Pretty nice and straight. Oh, I'm gonna have to move it this way. Plant it so you get a pretty nice point down here when you fold this in half one more time. Now, 
If I open this up, you can see this little, I call this this little shark fin that's sticking up in the middle. That's important because we don't need all this extra, these fox ears as I, I called them, because you don't have that across the whole paper. So to make this a circle, what we're gonna wanna do is cut right on that point when it's closed and then come across at a slight angle to make a circle. It sounds more complicated than it is. What I'm gonna do is, this is my point sticking up, so I'm keeping track of that when I close this. I can see it right in there on this side. I'm gonna take my scissors, I'm gonna start right where that is at, and I'm just going to round the paper there. So now I have this, and this is all just scraps. So I'm gonna get rid of that. Now if I open this up, it may not be a perfect circle, but it's gonna be pretty close. Okay, that's my half, that's my whole. Now, if I can fold that back up the way I had it. You have a choice to make at this point, and this has to do with what, what style of scissors you have. If you have larger scissors where you have more grip and pressure, I guess, to cut with, you are going to probably want to design the snowflake with it creased to this point. And I have done a design to show you what that might look like. Using pencil, I just sketched out little areas and took bites out of all the sides of the paper. So when I go to cut, I know where I wanna make those cuts. But if all you have access to is a smaller kind of flimsier pair of scissors, then what you're going to wanna do is open back up to here. So you will not have as many layers to cut through when you cut and design on here. I also did it on this one to show you what that might look like. But this is a better choice if you don't have larger, sharper scissors. So this is what you're gonna wanna do if you have scissors something similar to this. If you do have nice or heavier duty scissors, then by all means you're gonna wanna design in with this many layers because you can cut that many layers with those scissors, okay? So that is where we are at. Your next step is to use pencil and go ahead and sketch out a design like I have on this one. And then once you have your design sketched out, you take your scissors, you pinch the paper really tight. And with this many layers that you're cutting, you don't wanna try and cut the whole line with one crunch. You wanna take teeny tiny little baby bites with the scissors, just wiggling up and down. And that is how you can cut through a lot of layers of paper, but pretty darn accurately. I'm gonna take my scraps as they fall out and set them aside. Curves are a little bit harder. You just gotta take your time. And you gotta pay attention to where your little fingers are at so you don't go cutting yourself at any point. Safety is always important. Now, one of the things that'll happen if your creases weren't seated quite right when you did the third fold is if you cut something really close to the edge, because the edge doesn't match up in underneath layers, it might not show up when you go to cut. So the better your creases are and the more accurate you are with this, the better when you cut, it turns out. It's just a little bit more precise, the better you fold when you begin the snowflake. Now, the more cuts you take out of the snowflake creates more negative space in the snowflake, which results in more of a lacier looking snowflake. If you only take small little cuts here and there out of the snowflake and you leave more paper, which would be the positive space, then you do the negative space of cutting, then your snowflake isn't gonna be as lacy. It's gonna be more of those chunky snowflakes that fall out of the sky when it's snowing, but it's kind of too warm to be snowing and the snowflakes kind of all crash into each other and make big lumps. I prefer the lacier ones, so I always cut a lot away. So there's, you know, you can see from a piece of paper that started like that, I've taken a lot of the paper away, creating all that negative space. And then of course, the best part of cutting a paper snowflake is the reveal. So I'm gonna slowly pull my layer open. There's in half. Then this side opens up. 
And this side opens up. Ooh, looking very good. And then you open all the way and you get this gorgeous paper snowflake. In the past, I've done this lessons, I don't know, several different times with students. Sometimes we have a theme to our snowflakes and sometimes I just let you do what you want and have fun discovering what you can do. And that's really what this lesson is meant to do. But I thought since you're watching the video, I would show you a couple of past ones that I've done that are pretty cool. When I was practicing for this lesson, the first one I tried on my own turned out like this. It is very, very lacy. And I'll show you when I open it up why I really like it. When I open it up, I like how this little area in here with the two bunny ears, I guess maybe it does look like bunny ears. I thought it looked like candles in a window, so I really like that area on this design. I like how the center ended up being a star. That was not planned. I just cut the tip of the snowflake off, and that's what I got. This one, you can tell I did not cut the tip off, but I put a little circle down there, which made that kind of snowflake pattern. And then in years past, I said oh, sometimes we had a theme. I spelled out my name. This is with it flopped to the fewer layers. This is not, this would have been folded in half again to get to this size. So this is if you open it up that one time because you don't have as strong as scissors. But if I open my name snowflake up, although the W made the outside edge just a perfect circle, there is Walsh in snowflake. It looks a little bit like some sort of a stormtrooper symbol or something, but as you can tell, when I fold it back up, it is my name in Snowflake. And then one more I did, kind of funny, is I did an art palette one year and cut it out. So when you open this up, you have an art snowflake. <laughs> so experiment with getting that, that crease and those folds right first. Once you get the hang of it, Practice some snowflake carving until you get to one that really makes you happy. The one that you like the best, I would appreciate you snapping a picture of and sending it to me through Google Classroom so I can take a look at what you did. Oh, I never thought of that. You could layer a couple, then it gets really lacy. So enjoy your snowflake cutting. Get your family involved if they have the time and inclination. Have a great day, and I appreciate you taking your virtual art lesson today. Thank you.